All right. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. And thank you for joining us for our webinar, 2021 Graduates Standing Out in a Recovering Jobs Market. I am Jessica Schaefer, and I'm joined with my colleague, Megan Trzinski, this afternoon, who will be presenting some data that we've gathered from the graduating class of 2021 as well as sharing additional insights and takeaways for you guys. Um, as I mentioned, I am Jessica Schaefer and I lead our marketing and communications for LaSalle Network. And so I wanna give you a little color commentary on what LaSalle is, because it's important to understand who we are and what we do and, and why we're experts to be able to provide this information to all of you guys. So LaSalle Network is a staffing and recruiting firm. And the best way to think about it is a staffing and recruiting firm is really like a matchmaker. Our job is to connect great people with great companies. And so just like a matchmaker pairs like-minded people to help find partners and relationships for the long term, that's what we're looking to do as well. And each year we work with thousands of recent college graduates to help them land a position that's right for them. Maybe what's important is location. Maybe it's the actual role that they might be doing, the company culture. There's a myriad of different things that are important to people. And Megan will talk a little bit more about those drivers today. But LaSalle Network has been in business for more than two decades. We are based in Chicago, uh, but we place people nationwide. And so we've helped more than 70,000 people find jobs since our inception in 1998. Now we place people in a number of different verticals. So as you can see on the left-hand side here, we place people in accounting roles and customer service roles and marketing and HR. Really, we run the gamut here, but the hope is that at the end of this webinar, you'll have some takeaways that can be able to help you land positions in these fields but also that you know we can be a free resource in your job search because we should be one among many. Hopefully you're leveraging your network and career services and job boards and networking. There's so many opportunities that Megan's going to talk about today, but we hope to be one resource among many. Now I'd love to tell you a little bit more about Megan because actually when I was in your shoes, I don't wanna date myself and tell you how long ago that was, but when I was in your shoes, graduating from college, Megan was the person who called me and recruited me and helped me find my first job at LaSalle. And so I am close with Meg, we've worked together for a very long time, but she really knows her stuff. She has been in the staffing industry for more than 14 years and has really spent a large majority of her career helping entry-level college graduates like myself way back in the day and you guys now find jobs and what they're looking for. And so with that, I'll turn it over to Megan to run the webinar and I'll come back along with questions, but please submit questions in the Q&A section throughout as you have them. Megan's gonna answer them at the very end. This will also all be recorded. So while you might be furiously taking notes, if you miss something, don't worry, we'll send you the recording. With that, I'll turn it over to Megan. Thank you so much for the introduction, Jess. And I'm really excited to be here today. And as Jess mentioned, I've spent a lot of my career working with recent college graduates and helping them find entry-level positions. And so it is something that I really enjoy and I'm really passionate about. But I wanted to start by just going through a brief agenda on what I plan on covering today. So we will begin by just discussing the current hiring landscape then we'll share an overview of some of the data we collected from our survey of 2021 graduates. We'll then do some tips for job searching and updating your resume. And finally, we'll discuss how to set realistic expectations as you approach your job search. And as Jess mentioned, we are going to save about 10 minutes at the end for some of your questions. So do feel free to drop those in the chat as we go along. And as I mentioned, I'm really excited to be here today. I'm excited to share all this data with you and to discuss the trends that we're seeing as the market ramps back up and jobs come back. But I wanted to very quickly take some time to reflect 
and talk about where we've been over the course of the past year, because it's certainly been a wild ride. Um, it was just about a year ago where unemployment spiked significantly. It jumped from 3.5% up to 14.8%, and now it's back down to 6.3%. So as far as what this means for you, really, there's no doubt about it. You've had a very rapidly changing picture of what the job market looks like as you're entering the workforce. And we totally understand that there's a lot of uncertainty, but our hope is that the data we're going to share with you today and the advice we're going to give you on how to approach your job search is going to help alleviate some of that uncertainty and make you feel more prepared to approach your search. So in order to compile all of this data, what we did is we surveyed several hundred upcoming graduates from the class of 2021. And we had several goals. We wanted to get an understanding of what they're looking for in their first role and their first company out of school. We also wanted to understand how they've been attacking their job search so far. And then we also were hoping to really learn what the main concerns are that they have as they approach their job search and as they enter the workforce for the first time. And so we'll dive into some of the data in these upcoming slides. But to get started, we're going to do a quick poll here. And it's a pretty straightforward question. Have you accepted your first role out of college yet? Give you all a moment to respond. Okay, so it looks like we've got the results here. And while 13% of you said, yes, you have accepted your first role out of college, 87% of you said no. And if you are in the group that said no, what we want you to know is that you're most definitely not alone. So when we conducted our survey, what we found is that 88% of 2021 graduates had not yet accepted their first role out of school. And furthermore, it was about 79% who believed that it will be more difficult to get a job due to the pandemic. But again, the data that we're gonna give you today, the advice we're gonna give you today is going to help you navigate this. And um, we wanted you to just know that you're certainly not alone if you're in the group that is still job searching. And in this next slide, we wanted to compare this year to years past in terms of the percentage of emerging graduates who had accepted a job by February. That's when we conducted the survey. And so what we found is that the class of 2021 has the lowest percentage of job acceptances as of the month of February than any prior year we've surveyed with just 12% having accepted their first role out of college. And as you can see, looking at years past, that number has been significantly higher. I mean, look at 2017, it was 35%. So Keep in mind, this year's job market has looked different. And even though it's a small percentage who had already accepted their job by February, it doesn't necessarily mean that grads won't be able to find jobs this summer. And keep in mind too, that this may be a reflection of the job market at the time of our survey a few months ago. And we are seeing that things are steadily recovering and more jobs are being added each month. So it's important to keep that in mind as well. Another piece of information we thought was really interesting is when the class of 2021 began their job search. So our survey found that 41% of 2021 graduates started job searching six plus months out. And this was a pretty significant decrease from the prior year where 78% of 2020 graduates started job searching six or more months before graduation. So again, if you're in the group that has not yet landed a position, or maybe you did start your job search a bit later, there's no need to panic. Um, we have definitely seen that there are many 2021 graduates applying to jobs that we have posted at LaSalle Network. And something we wanted to point out is that certain companies may not have the ability to make early offers to 
2021 graduates. They may be focusing more of their efforts on hiring at the moment for people who have the ability to start right away, meaning April and early May. And obviously that won't work for folks who are graduating in mid-May, late May, or even June. So it's important to keep that in mind and just to remember that there may be companies that are more willing to consider 2021 graduates come this summer. We also thought this was interesting. We surveyed the class of 2021 on what industries they were open to, what types of companies they were willing to work in. And what we found is that 40% of 2021 graduates were open to any industry. And this was a pretty big decrease from last year where it was 48% of 2020 graduates who indicated they were open to any industry. Uh, we also asked about preferences around the size of the company and only 47% of the class of 2021 said that they were open to any size company. So we'd love to see these numbers be a little bit higher. We really encourage all of you to be flexible and be willing to consider a variety of different types of organizations you know, even if they're a little bit different from maybe what you had your heart set on initially in a competitive job market like this one, it's only going to benefit you to open yourself up to more opportunities. We also really thought it would be helpful to discuss the specific industries that have been hit the hardest versus the industries that are thriving and hiring quickly. Because although the job market is picking up substantially, there are certain industries that are still in recovery mode and they're still pretty hard hit. So some of the industries that have been hit the hardest and aren't adding jobs back as quickly include the airlines, hospitality, tourism, restaurants. Understandably, they have still uh, not been adding jobs back quite as quickly. But on the flip side, some of the industries that have really excelled include technology, finance, healthcare, and supply chain. And so we just want you to keep this in mind as you are applying to jobs and thinking about the types of industries that you might want to work in. Um, make sure you are targeting the industries that are growing. We also wanted to get an understanding of the types of roles that graduates are targeting. And these were the top three. Number one being marketing number two being human resources, and number three being administrative. And I can say after 14 years of doing this, these are always very popular jobs for recent graduates. And certainly there are companies that are hiring for these positions, but we did wanna let you know that we're seeing a greater demand in some other areas. And those include technology, uh, specifically cybersecurity roles, as well as sales positions and finance positions. So again, the name of the game is flexibility, and we really do encourage you to remain open to a wide variety of job opportunities. As I mentioned earlier, one of the goals of our survey was to also understand the top concerns that the class of 2021 has as they approach their job search. And I believe we are going to do another poll here as well. So we shared a few concerns up on the slide here, and we want to know if these are the concerns that ring true for you, and then which of these concerns is most pressing. And we'll give you a few moments to respond. Okay, so it looks like for many of you, our survey data is pretty on target with 97% of you saying that, yes, these are amongst your top concerns. And it looks like 55% uh, of you cited lack of experience, 29% of you discussed compensation as a pressing concern. And so we're gonna talk through all of these things. It's absolutely normal to have 
concerns and anxieties as you're dealing with your post-college job search, but we recognize that there are unique circumstances this year in particular. And so we want you to know that we're going to provide you with some concrete tips on what you can do to really help you excel in your job search and just give you a better understanding of how you can prepare. All right. Job searching. Our message here is that hope is not a strategy. It is very important to approach your job search with a true plan. So Taylor, Taylor, Taylor. Uh, what we mean by this is take the time to customize your resume and your cover letter for the job you're applying for. Employers can tell if they're receiving a resume that has not been tailored to them. So just keep that in mind. Take the extra time. Make sure that your resume makes sense for the job that you're applying for. Also set aside time to job search. So it seems basic, but if you don't treat your job search like a serious commitment or a serious appointment, it's really easy to push it off and procrastinate. So set aside the time put it in your calendar and make sure to commit to it. You also need to make sure that you're targeting growth companies. So we shared with you some of the industries that are growing and adding jobs rapidly. Keep those in mind, do your own research as well, and then put together a short list of companies that you'd really like to go after. Also consider using a recruiting firm. Um, firms like LaSalle know firsthand that there are a number of ways in which we can help job seekers. And yes, we can potentially connect you to a job opportunity, but we can also provide advice in the form of interview coaching and resume tips. And we can really help you improve the way that you present yourself to a potential employer. And we also really encourage you to work your network. Um, it's estimated that up to 70% of jobs are obtained through networking. And so in our next slide here, we'll talk a little bit more about who exactly makes up your network because it's more people than you think. I love the little gif of Moira Rose here, but it's everyone you might know, neighbors, family, friends, your friends' parents, alumni of your college or university, your professors. Just keep in mind that you should be talking about your job search with anyone and everyone you know because you never know who's hiring and what sort of connections people have. We also wanted to talk a little bit about the power of LinkedIn. We know that many of you use LinkedIn for uh, its online job board capabilities, but it's really so much more than that. It's really a powerful networking tool as well. And what we recommend doing is if there is a particular organization that you're really interested in, Go ahead, look them up on LinkedIn, take the time to find the right person and send them a well-written personalized LinkedIn message. Now, who's the right person? It could be someone whose title reflects that they're in a recruiting position or human resources or talent acquisition. It could be someone at that company who holds a similar role to what you're hoping to do. Or maybe it's someone that you see shares a lot of content that you find particularly helpful but take the time and send them a LinkedIn message and make sure that you're not just trying to connect with them without sending a message and providing any sort of context. After you send them the LinkedIn message, we do also recommend following them on LinkedIn and following the company on LinkedIn. And this is also a great reminder to ensure that your own personal LinkedIn profile is spruced up, up to date and looks its best. Uh, and actually, if you scan the QR code on this slide, we have a guide that we put together on how to use LinkedIn effectively. There are a ton of tips in there and an in-depth checklist for creating a strong profile. So we really recommend that you take advantage of that. We also wanted to talk about the types of employment that exist beyond just permanent direct hire roles. And we recognize that the majority of emerging college graduates have a permanent role in mind when they envision the type of job that they're going to step into after graduation. But there are so many benefits to other roles, including temporary and contract positions, temporary to permanent roles, internships, part-time work. And our survey found that actually 81% of respondents said that they would consider something temporary or temporary to permanent, which we thought was fantastic. Unfortunately, it was a smaller percentage that said they would accept an internship, only 37%. 
And then 27% said they would accept part-time work. So again, we just want you to keep in mind that this was a unique year where many people weren't able to build up their resume in the traditional way that they normally would have, right? There were many internship programs that were canceled. On-campus leadership activities were harder to do when we all had to move to virtual learning. Extracurriculars kind of got wiped out. So if you feel like your resume is a bit light in terms of professional experience, these are really great options to consider. And just to further exp expand upon some of the benefits of temporary employment, um, because there are many, and I recognize that not everyone on this webinar is necessarily very familiar with temporary employment. My overall message is that just because it's a temporary role doesn't mean it's any less important. There are so many ways in which temporary roles can help you in your career. Obviously, it's a great way to gain professional experience, and oftentimes employers that are bringing on a temporary or attempt to perm employee may do so without any sort of interview process. They might be open to also just not even reviewing a resume and taking the advice and taking the word of a recruiter at a, a recruiting firm who's working with you. So keep that in mind is that there might be a lower barrier to entry to get your foot in the door through a temporary position. Temporary roles are also a great way to just experience different workplace cultures and to really learn more about what it is that you're interested in, what sort of leadership style works for you, what sort of office environment works for you, and then you can figure out what to do next after you complete that temporary role and want to apply for other positions. They're also a really great way to try out a new position or a new industry without necessarily being locked into a very long-term commitment in case it ends up not being the right fit for you. And additionally, it's a really great way to expand your network. You never know who you're going to meet while on a temporary assignment. And obviously, if you perform well and have good attendance and a good attitude, your supervisor can potentially serve as a reference for you down the road. And additionally, there is always that chance that a temporary role could end up resulting in a permanent offer. So these are all things we just want you to keep in mind and all great reasons to consider a temporary role. So as I mentioned on one of the previous slides here, we recognize that this year it was pretty tough for the class of 2021 to have an internship. And our survey found that 32% of 2021 graduates actually didn't have any internships throughout their college career. So we don't want you to feel down and feel like it's impossible to create a great resume that really highlights your skills. There are a number of ways in which you can be proactive and take control to really build skills and experience through virtual skill building opportunities like some of the things we have listed here, whether it's through Google Analytics, Code Academy, Adobe Creative Cloud, Duolingo. These are just a few examples of different organizations that offer opportunities for online courses and online certifications, many of them free. And these are great ways to really bolster your skills. From here, we're gonna shift gears and talk a little bit about your resume and some things that you can do to make sure that your resume is as strong as possible. And now more than ever, as we mentioned before, it's important to tailor the resume and cover letter to the role. So this is where you've really got to take the advice from your career services team to heart. It's even more true now than it was before. So go ahead and read through some of these do's and don'ts. I'm not going to read each and every one of them, but I did want to highlight specifically in the do column, uh, the bullet on highlighting and qualifying accomplishments this is really, really important. Uh, employers don't necessarily just want to see a lengthy list of what you did day to day. They really wanna know how you made an impact in your job. So you have to think about what you did and think about how you did contribute and whether it was through increasing revenue, whether it was through bringing about cost savings, maybe you uh, improved retention, maybe you added new clients, whatever your accomplishments were, make sure to highlight those and be sure to attach specific numbers to them, quantify them if you can. That's gonna really make your resume stand out. 
Additionally, if there is the chance to provide a cover letter, we do recommend doing so. A well-written cover letter is a great way to help a hiring manager get to know you and to share a little bit more than what they might be able to see on your resume. All right, we also want to talk about managing expectations. That is a huge piece of being successful in your job search. And we are going to do another poll here. Okay, so we want to know, do you think the pandemic will impact salaries and benefits that companies offer this year? Okay. All right, so 82% of you said, yes, you do think the pandemic will impact salaries and benefits companies offer this year. And we're inclined to agree with you, those of you who said yes. Uh, it's important to keep in mind that for perks and benefits, you may need to compromise. Obviously, a lot of companies were greatly impacted financially over the course of the past year, and some of them may have had to slightly scale back certain perks or benefits that they previously offered. Additionally, if you do decide you'd like to consider a temporary or a part-time role, you may not be given as many benefits and options as full-time employees have. But again, if you decide that that's a route you want to go, it can be a really great way to build your experience if you're able to be more flexible around perks and benefits. Location is another area that we definitely recommend showing some flexibility on. Uh, you might need to take a location that's less ideal or a bit different from what your number one preference is. We also want you to keep in mind that we're in this state of flux right now where some companies are fully back on site and in the office. Others are still working fully remotely or virtually. Others are doing a hybrid of the two. And so it's something that you should understand as you're going through the interview process and be sure to ask about if location is a priority for you. And it's also important to keep in mind that location uh, could still change over the course of the next several months as companies are learning more about their options for returning to the office. And then compensation is a big area where it is important to have realistic expectations and to evaluate whether the compensation you're asking for and expecting is realistic. And just keep in mind that if you are starting at a lower compensation than what you had originally hoped for, as companies continue to recover, as the economy recovers, chances are that there are going to be opportunities for advancement, both in terms of responsibilities and compensation. So just because you're starting not exactly where you wanted to meet doesn't mean that there might not be that opportunity to get back up to what you were hoping for. Our survey did specifically ask 2021 graduates about salary expectations, and here is what we found. 7% are making less than they expected, 47% are making about what they expected, and 46% are making more than they expected. So wanted to share this with you just to point out that over 50% of those who responded indicated that they're making just about what they expected or less. So again, it's really important to just keep that in mind and ensure that your expectations aren't unreasonable so that you can really be competitive with other job seekers. You've heard me say the word flexibility quite a bit today, and we just wanted to recap all the ways in which flexibility might help you get ahead as you are entering the job market. So don't forget to be flexible around the industries that you're willing to work in, as well as your job function. Perhaps consider types of jobs or types of companies that maybe aren't uh, or they weren't on your wish list previously. Also be flexible around location if you can. Consider the upside of accepting a temporary or part-time role or possibly an internship. And one additional way that I have not mentioned just yet, but is huge is to show flexibility around the days and times that you're willing to interview. If you tell an employer that you're willing to interview early morning or after 5 p.m. or even on a weekend, it's really going to make you stand out compared to others who might not show that same eagerness. So keep that in mind. It can really go a long way. And I know firsthand at LaSalle Network that many of our hiring managers who are so busy 
much prefer to do a weekend interview. So it's a really great way just to show how seriously you're taking your search and that you're willing to go above and beyond to land a new role. Next, we're gonna talk a little bit about how you can effectively prepare for interviews. And given the fact that most of us are doing interviews over video these days, we wanted to specifically share some tips that are relevant for video interviewing. The first being to test your equipment in advance. <laughs> you don't want to run into technical difficulties with the audio or anything. So make sure to test it in advance. And then just make sure that your backdrop is professional, not cluttered, uh, not going to be distracting. Also prep your housemates. So whether that's a pet and making sure that they're in a different area of your house, whether it's notifying your roommates that you're gonna be on an interview for the next hour, whatever you need to do, just make sure that you prep your housemates so that you can have some quiet and privacy for the duration of the interview. You also want to be prepared and logged in about 10 minutes in advance. Dress the part, so do make sure that you're dressed business professional. Maintain eye contact. Be sure to speak slowly and clearly. And finally, be sure to take notes. It's a really important way to show your interviewer that you're engaged in the conversation. And then you can refer back to those notes at the end of the interview where you'll have a chance to ask some questions and your questions are gonna be much better if you can reference things that came up over the course of the conversation. We also thought it would be really helpful to discuss some COVID related interview questions that you can expect. We know that we're seeing many employers ask specific questions about what you have been doing over the past year. So for instance, what has your routine been like during the pandemic? How did you manage e-learning? How did you work to improve yourself last year? Or what did you learn about yourself? And the goal in asking these questions is to see what have you done to overcome really challenging circumstances? How have you adapted? How have you kept your skills sharp? So really think about these questions and make sure you're ready for them. We know that they're different than the normal interview questions that come up, but they'll potentially provide an employer with really great insight into the type of person you are and how you overcome adversity. We also wanted to discuss wrapping up the interview. This is important. So. You want to close the interview. It's important to thank the interviewer for their time and express your interest in the role so that they walk away 100% certain that you want this job. And you also need to be sure that expectations are set around when you can expect to hear from the interviewer and if there are any next steps in the process or if there's anything else that they need from you to keep things moving forward. It's also really important to think about all the steps you need to take after the interview. The follow-up is critical. So be sure to connect on LinkedIn. Be sure to send a well-written follow-up thank you email to everyone you've met with. And then set a reminder to check in if you haven't heard back in the timeline that was discussed. There's nothing wrong with politely following up and asking if there's any update if you haven't heard back and the appropriate amount of time has passed. All right, as we are wrapping things up here, I wanted to encourage all of you to submit your resume to us at campusrecruiting at lasallenetwork.com. Whether you are hoping to interview with us and be considered for job opportunities, whether you're looking for resume advice or you would just like to have a conversation offline about any of the topics we covered today, we're happy to do all of those things. And I also wanted to mention that we have a really exciting event coming up on Tuesday, May 4th. We are doing a 2021 graduate interview day. It's going to be all virtual, so all over Zoom, but myself and my team members, in addition to several other recruiters at LaSalle, are going to be interviewing graduates who might be interested in internal positions at LaSalle Network. We are hiring. Uh, or if you want to be connected to our clients and be considered for some of the job opportunities that we're hiring for externally, we can definitely explore that as well. And from here, we are going to open things up to take your questions. All right. Thank you, Megan. That was great. And we are doing really well on timing. 
So we have a number of questions in the Q&A. I answered one of them already, but one of the questions that was submitted early on was the question if LaSalle Network is a free service and a free resource to students. And that is 100% correct. We are completely a free resource that should definitely be utilized in your job search. As Megan has mentioned, we help candidates with preparing for interviews. We give feedback on your resumes. And so it's 100% free. You should absolutely use us. But Megan, there's some other questions pertaining to our services as well. So one of them is, are there recruiting firms working in specific industries like solar or agriculture? That is a really great question, and I'm happy, uh, Tony, to do some further research into some specific firms and follow up with you directly to make some recommendations, but the short answer is yes. <laughs> there are staffing and recruiting firms for just about any industry, and while many firms uh, kind of take a more generalist approach like LaSalle, where we work with all industries and across a wide variety of verticals, there are very niche firms out there that I would assume work in some of the spaces you mentioned, solar and agriculture. So I'm happy to look into that for you and can definitely follow up with you later on. And Megan, what's the best way to get in touch with a staffing firm like ours? Absolutely. So I know we had shared the campus recruiting at lasallenetwork.com email. That is a great email address to reach out to my team. It's going to hit me as well as some of my teammates, and we'll make sure that your resume gets in the right hands, depending on the type of job that you're interested in. Uh, additionally, if you want to get a little more insight into the specific jobs that we have available, you can go to our website right here on this slide, lasallenetwork.com, and we have our jobs on the website organized according to whatever skill set they are in. We also do have a work for LaSalle section on the website, and that's for people who might be interested in working for us internally. Perfect. And there's another question about internships. Does LaSalle help with internships for younger students? <laughs> Absolutely. So we are actually hiring um, for our internship program right now. We have just begun the initial phases of interviewing. At LaSalle, we hire interns in a number of different areas, some part-time internships, some full-time, but the internship openings that we have include marketing, PR, HR. Uh, we do some data and analytics internships, recruiting internships, sales internships. So that's definitely something that we can talk to you about further as well. And then Megan, there's some questions specifically about certain types of roles. Sure. So for example, if you're looking to get into supply chain or sales, what might an employer be looking for in those candidates? Absolutely. So I would say for something in the supply chain space, it'll be important to share uh, your academic background. So, you know, I know not all schools have a supply chain degree, but if you don't have the opportunity to pursue a supply chain major, have you taken courses that have provided you additional information on supply chain? I would also say that in supply chain, software experience tends to be looked at and um, given high priority. So if you can speak to any of your software skills or if you can do research into any of the highly sought after software programs that are uh, typically a requirement of entry level supply chain jobs, it's gonna be beneficial if you can speak to relevant experience you've had with those programs. And Jess, you had mentioned sales roles as well. Very good. Okay, so for sales, I would say Similar thing in terms of education, I know there are some colleges that offer a specific sales major. Um, if you don't have that at your school, there are a number of different ways in which you can show an aptitude and interest for sales. So I would be prepared to talk about any sort of experiences you've had uh, in a role that involves phone work and outbound calling. Uh, if you've taken marketing courses, there's transferable skill sets there as well. And so at the end of the day, sales is really about the willingness and the uh, I guess the mentality where you're not afraid to pick up the phone and talk to anyone. And so it's really important to assert those that confidence and to assert your ability to do those skills in an interview. And then kind of a two-parter for you, Megan. The sure. first question is, um, 
you know, when you're applying for a position and you're entry level because you just graduated from college, should you only target entry level positions or can you apply for something that's a little bit more advanced? And what the part two is, and what happens if you're trying to apply for something that's outside of your major? So perhaps you're majoring in political science, but you'd like to work in finance. Do you have a shot at those jobs? Should you apply? How do you position yourself? Yeah. My thought is this, um, both when it comes to applying for jobs that are outside of what you majored in or applying to jobs that are a bit higher level, there's no harm in doing it. But I think that it's important to have self-awareness in those situations. And this is where a well-written cover letter and a well-written LinkedIn message can really help you. So if you majored in political science and you're trying to get into finance, I think it's important to kind of own the areas that might not be uh, your strengths, but to explain why you feel like you have transferable skills and experience. And you're really going to be able to outline that in a cover letter or in a personal LinkedIn message to someone. And I think the same rings true if you're trying to apply for a job where the requirements read a little heavier than the experience you bring to the table. It's all about just addressing it on the front end to see if you can overcome those objections. And the thing to keep in mind is that a company might not be posting 100% of their open job opportunities. So there's really no harm in trying to apply for a job that might be a little higher level than what your experience is, because you never know what other sort of entry level roles may exist at that organization. The next two questions are a little bit more of the tactical, getting to the nitty gritty of what you talked about. Yeah. So the first is in regards to virtual interviews. Okay. So what happens, which has happened to all of us, what happens when your Wi-Fi isn't great and your computer freezes or the internet crashes or something happens during your virtual interview? How do you address that? Yeah. And I think uh, employers are, are understanding of these sorts of challenges for sure. However, if you know that your internet tends to be kind of spotty, I think it is best to just address it on the front end and to say, I just want to let you know, I'm hopeful that we're not going to run into any issues today, but there is the slight chance that, you know, things may freeze up and please let me know if you're having any difficulties hearing me. I think an interviewer really appreciates the heads up on those types of situations. And I think if you do run into a situation where things stop working altogether, you're totally frozen, you get disconnected, make sure that you have other forms of contact for whomever you're speaking with. Um, even if you just give them a phone call immediately after the situation arises, showing that sort of urgency to remedy the situation is going to go a long way. And who knows, the employer may be willing to flip to a phone interview or something or possibly reschedule. I know we have those situations pop up all the time at LaSalle and it is really not a big deal as long as you approach it the right way. And like I said, take that initiative to follow up if you do end up getting disconnected. I had heard this today, Megan, and it's I'm curious to see if you had heard it, just my own anecdote. But for virtual interviews, I had some friends who were going through virtual interviews and the interviewer asked them to stand up to see what they were wearing on their bottom half to see if they were dressed professionally. And so I don't know if you've encountered that or had feedback at all, Megan, but you know, what do you suggest? Should we be prepared to be, you know, top to bottom, ready to go? You know what? I think to be safe, that absolutely, I would encourage you to be fully dressed professionally from top to bottom, just because you never know. And the other plus side of getting fully dressed as if you were going into an office it puts you in a different mindset versus if you're wearing your pajamas, you tend to feel a little lazier, a little less engaged. And if you're in a professional suit, you're going to be on your game. It's just going to give you a little bit of a mental shift that may help you perform better in that interview. And then you're safe and you're covered if your interviewer should want to do something like that. Give you a heart attack, I'm sure. <laughs> um, the next question is when we're trying to expand our network on LinkedIn, how do we know who we should be connecting with? Absolutely. So I think it, you can take a few different approaches. Um, as I mentioned, if you have a company that you are interested in, not necessarily super focused on a specific job at that company, I would take a look at people whose titles indicate that they are a leader within recruiting or human resources. So it could be 
manager of recruiting, director of HR, talent acquisition manager. These are all titles that indicate this person is in some way, shape or form involved with recruiting at the organization. And hopefully you'll get a response from them or they can direct you to the appropriate person on their staff. I also think that if you do have any connection with anyone at the company, maybe you find someone who's an alum of your university, you can always leverage that. And hopefully that person's going to be a little more likely to respond to you if you mention that you have something in common. Uh, and then additionally, if you see someone at a company where they hold a job title that seems to be similar to what you want to do, that's a great person to reach out to as well. And the questions keep coming, you guys. These are great. Keep sending them in. We've got plenty of time to go through them. So what should you do to stand out to recruiters if you don't have very much experience? Absolutely. So there is the virtual skill building that you can do. I know one of our slides touched on it, but depending on the field that you want to get into, I think you know there are a number of different ways where you can kind of take control. You can go online, register for courses, register to complete different certifications that are going to help you build up your resume a little bit. And I know I keep talking cover letter. A cover letter is a great way to get past uh, a situation like this where you feel like your resume isn't gonna tell the full story of what you're capable of. But I also think that that is a great scenario in which you might want to meet with a recruiter at a recruiting firm like LaSalle, where they can really coach you on how to make sure your resume looks as strong as possible. And they can connect you to some temporary or temp to permanent jobs where there's gonna be a little bit uh, less scrutiny of the resume. And it's gonna be a little easier to get your foot in the door to build up that, some of that experience that you feel like you're lacking. So those would be my main recommendations. The next question, while it, it comes in and it's specific to sales, Megan, I think we can address it a little bit more generally. So what happens if you start your career and you take a position in sales or mm -hmm. marketing or customer service or whatever it may be, and you think that's not my target career path, that's not ultimately where I want to end up, how much does accepting your first role in a specific field hinder your opportunities in other fields down the road? That's a fair question. I honestly don't think that it's that much of a concern for most employers. I think that you should be ready for the question though, when you go into the interview after you know your first year or whenever you decide that you do wanna take that leap and move into the field that is more in line with your long-term career ambitions, you've gotta be prepared to talk about why it was the right decision to take the sales job at the time. Uh, you also have to talk about the applicable experience that you've gained, even if it's not the exact same job, what are the transferable skills you've acquired along the way that you can now leverage into this position? So I don't think it's necessarily gonna set your course for your entire career. You just have to be prepared to discuss it in the interview and overcome those objections. Is it better to join a staffing firm in order to land a position that is the best fit for you? Or is it more beneficial to use resources like LinkedIn or Handshake? Honestly, what we recommend is doing all of the above. And I know that that's something we tell every single person who interviews with us, even if we think they are a fantastic candidate and we're pretty darn certain we can help them find a job or we want to hire them, we always say, don't slow down anything else you're doing. Keep looking on LinkedIn, keep networking. You've got to use as many resources as you have at your fingertips. There's a couple questions around the recent grad interview day. So I'm grabbing the link for everyone and I'll put that in the chat in just a moment. Um, what about self-employment, Megan? How do you frame self-employment on a resume? Yeah. Um, that is a great question. So I'm assuming this might be if you were like the founder of your own organization or something like that. Um, it, it's a great, honestly, it's a great way to build up a resume. I think there are so many things that you do. If, you, if you're self-employed, your variety of responsibility is typically pretty vast, right? So you're typically involved in operations, possibly recruiting, possibly marketing, sales. And so I think it's a great way where you can think about the career path that you ultimately want to get into and then take the time to highlight the aspects of your self-employment that are most directly related to that field. But I know typically when I've 
you know, interviewed people who are self-employed, they always say, oh my God, this job gave me exposure to so many different things. So it's really important to reflect on that and then to tailor your resume to wherever you want to take your career next. And can projects related to a specific field cover up to some extent for a gap in experience? I would say yes. Uh, if this is a question about school projects, which is what it kind of I'm assuming the question might be pertaining to, I know that's definitely something we see all the time, that if you didn't necessarily have an internship or you didn't hold a part-time job or a work-study position, but you can really speak in a lot of detail about a particular class project that you completed, 100%. That's always really impressive. So I would absolutely encourage you that if there's something notable as far as a project goes, include that on your resume and just be sure to be honest about the fact that it was a, a school project versus a full-time job. And then it looks like the last question perhaps, uh, or maybe there's a couple more trickling in, but Megan, do we help international students? We do have some abilities to help international students. Each of our clients has different um, requirements in terms of work authorizations and things like that. But I know there are certain teams at LaSalle Network that have successfully placed international students. Uh, and again, I'm happy to connect with uh, whoever asked the question individually to talk more, but um, our technology services recruiting team is coming to mind. I know that they have had some success working with international students, absolutely. Okay, this might be the last one. Oh, this is great. They keep they keep flowing in. Uh, and obviously, if we don't have time to answer all of your questions today, we will take note of all of the ones that were submitted through the Q&A and send out responses to those to the group at large. But Megan, this next one is in regards to that gap again. So mm -hmm. say I graduated in December, but I haven't been able to land a job. And hypothetically, this could be somebody who graduates in May and still doesn't have a job in August or September or October. Is the gap on my resume hurting my job search? And so should I just take any job to close the gap? That's a great question. And I would say that I would recommend considering if it's advantageous to take on a temporary job of some sort or a part-time job, just to show that you're eager to work, you want to keep your skills sharp until you do land that ideal permanent position. At the same time, I wouldn't say to just take any job. You want to make sure that it's a job that um, let's say it's a part-time job and you decide that that's what makes sense for you because then you can spend a good chunk of every week still searching for something permanent. Um, or if you decide to take a temporary position, hey, that's a great way to build your resume. There's no harm in doing that. Um, so I, I would say don't necessarily just take any job to have a job, but really think about the types of jobs that could potentially allow you to either continue job searching or building up your resume. Fabulous. Thank you. So with that, I want to reiterate just a couple points before we close out, which can we change our slide to show the email address that the that our webinar participants can uh, submit their resumes to because, as Megan mentioned, we are hiring at LaSalle, we have hired about 50 people already so far this year, and have some really aggressive growth plans. So if you aren't sure what you want to do, or maybe you are sure what you want to do, LaSalle might be a great place for you to start your career, just like it was for Megan and I when Meg graduated from Notre Dame and I graduated from Illinois Wesleyan. So that's point number one. Feel free to submit your resume. We'd love to be a resource for you. Again, completely free. Advice on your resume, advice on interviewing. That's what we're here for. We're experts who have been doing this for more than two decades. Let us help you. Let us be a resource for you. So that's number one. Number two is perhaps you are an undergrad and you're looking for more experience so you don't have those gaps on your resume. You can also reach out to campus recruiting because as Megan mentioned, we're in the throes of recruiting for our summer internship program. And right now, all of our internships are virtual because we're not back in the office yet. So it's a great opportunity for regardless of where you sit or where, where you'll head this summer that you can have some experience. And then the last point that I wanted to reiterate is the recent graduate interview day that Megan mentioned on May 4th. So I did post the link in our chat section and hopefully you can grab that before you log off for the day, but don't worry, we're also sending it in a follow-up email. 
but we, again, place more than 4,000 recent college graduates in jobs each year at positions across the country in all different types of roles, temporary and permanent. And so if you're still looking for a job, if you're among, among the majority that's on this webinar that's still looking, sign up for that interview day. If the date and time doesn't work, shoot Megan at, at campus recruiting at lasallenetwork.com an email, and we'll see if we can't get you in on another day. But we'd love to be a resource. We have this coordinated so that you can meet with a number of our recruiters. But with that, thank you guys all for attending. Thank you, Megan, for all of your insights. We'll be sending out the recording. And obviously, if you have any other questions, I'm sure Megan would be happy to answer them at a later date. Absolutely. Thank you guys all so much. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day, guys.